was now nearing midnight, and in spite of rain, lightning, thunder, and fog, we had uh, flushed out, discovered, and identified almost 150 species of birds. The record for this area is 180, and maybe next year on another rainy, foggy, wet birdathon, maybe that's exactly what I'll find. Tom Cassie was born in Helena, Arkansas on February 11, 1915. Known in business as Thomas W. Cassie Jr., he was actually the fifth in a lineage which began with the first Thomas W. Cassie born in 1812 in Columbia, Tennessee. Tom's father was a successful cotton broker and planter, known locally as Mr. Woody. The Cassie family holdings in Helena included several farms or plantations, as they were known at the time in Arkansas, and Tom grew up with his younger siblings, Alan and Keith, in the rural south. I'm sure they spent a lot of time hunting and fishing because that was really sort of a way of life in the south. He really first started bird watching when he was out duck hunting, and on days when there were no ducks flying, he noticed that there were a lot of other birds around and he started trying to figure out what they were and what they were doing. The Depression hit the South hard and farming did not appear to offer great opportunities for an ambitious young man. He graduated at the age of 16, went on to Duke University and then to Harvard Law School. Tom headed to New York City where he worked for several years for the law firm of Simpson, Thatcher and Bartlett. At the termination of the war, Tom joined Bessemer Securities, where he would ultimately become the president and chief executive officer. After retiring from Bessemer in 1980, Tom would serve on a number of corporate boards, including ITT Corporation and the King Ranch, which gave him the opportunity to pursue a passion that he had developed early on, which was birding. He felt very at home there. He could do what he enjoyed, and at the same time, it was part of his professional life. Tom and the rest of the board always enjoyed a sundowner at one of the watering holes where they could not only sit and have a bourbon and water, but watch the many different bird species and animal species. I think what Tom really liked about the King Ranch was it was this huge expanse that provided so much important habitat for migratory songbirds. Tom was an all-around conservationist, particularly when it comes to birds in their habitat. Tom's involvement with birds first began from the pursuit of hunting them, but his assessment was that the hunters were the most committed conservationist of all. For Tom, the Audubon Society was, was the organization that he really felt very strongly about particularly because of the, the bird conservation aspect. Tom claimed that he had been a junior member of the Audubon Society as a boy in Helena, Arkansas. But his first recorded involvement with Audubon was when he and his wife Patricia moved from New York City to Bedford, New York in 1958 and joined the local chapter. Bedford Audubon in Tom's backyard was one of the most active local chapters uh, in the area. They firmly believed to act locally while we're thinking globally. He started making people aware of the fact that the leadership should come a great deal from the chapters. He wanted Audubon's mission to have an outreach that it had not had uh, before he became chairman. Tom, throughout his life, had worked with local chapters like Bedford Audubon in protecting preserves and land deals and advocating for local actions that would benefit the environment in his community and the surrounding county. Because he believed local chapters were critical in implementing conservation action. Tom served on the board of the National Audubon Society from 1972 to 1983, and then again from 1994 to 1996. He was chairman of Audubon from 1979 to 1983. Tom had been with the National Audubon Society for many years. He was a legend. Tom was a real pro, and uh, he was a demanding presence. He was a very sharp, smart individual. He was tough. He was a very strong leader, but in a very dignified, gentlemanly way. Tom was fun, he was jovial, he was to the point. He was charming. 
And charm, I think, has a great deal to do with how you lead people. It's tough to run a board of 36 people with 36 different ideas. But Tom did that. One of the most important projects that Tom spearheaded as chairman was the reproduction of John James Audubon's Elephant Folio. They owned an original copy of the Audubon Folio, which at the time was worth about $1.7 million. In 1982, the Board of National Audubon considered selling their only original copy to raise much needed funding. Then Tom and Les Line came up with the idea of producing a facsimile edition, and they discovered that the Topon Press in Japan was probably the premier company at doing this particular kind of reproduction. 350 sets were produced and sold for $15,000 a piece, netting Audubon a profit of $2.25 million. He knew how to run a business, and that's something that Audubon desperately always needs. And then you connect that with the educational part of providing these facsimile double elephant folio um, books that are, you know, reasonable price to universities. He knew that we need to build a conservation conscious for young people in this country. He was particularly interested in education, and he was also particularly interested in the field work of the society. Tom really felt that field work was important for National Audubon Society. He wanted to see our science department and our sanctuary people out in the field, but Tom was a field man himself. You know, Tom was not somebody that sat in an office in a, in a leather chair. Tom would go out to Matinicus Rock with Carl and Harriet Buckheister, and they would go out to study the petrels. These little members of the albatross family dig burrows three feet long underground. So that means you have to lay on the ground flat and you have to sort of roll your sleeve up and you gotta reach into the burrow. While on the board and as its chairman, Tom was very interested and involved in Audubon's field work. Tom and I together initiated the P Puffin Project. The Puffin Project started in 1973. In those years, no one had ever tried to restore a Puffin colony before. Tom backed the thing from the beginning and I ended up making the puffin decoys which were used to attract the wild puffins back to Eastern Egg Rock. In the case of the condor, Tom felt that National Audubon Society was a world-renowned and world-respected bird conservation organization and we weren't going to let the California condor go extinct uh, here in our own backyard. So Tom was committed to finding the funding and to move forward with that program. The irony was that Tom had spent so much time and effort forming the California Condor Research Center and he had never actually seen a bird in the wild. So we drove out to this very piece of property and stood on this hill right here and had five condors come up out of the canyon behind us. And those were five of the last nine birds uh, left in the wild population. I think the reason Tom was on the board for National Audubon Society was indeed because of his passion for, for birds. And uh, that's what made it fun to go with Tom in the field because he was just so excited all the time about, let's keep going, let's go to the next spot. What are we gonna see next? When I was younger, we used to travel as a family to upstate New York to the Adirondacks. And I woke up one morning and walked out on the porch to find grandpa all by himself, staring out at the vista and listening to a cassette tape of birds chirping. He loved bird watching, he loved outdoor sportsman activities, he loved the environment, he loved the essence of the Audubon Society mission. He adored nature and the birds and the environment, and uh, this was a way he could express himself and get the people around him to follow in his footsteps. The Audubon Society was one of the most uh, gratifying things that Tom ever did as far as he was concerned. I used him as my mentor. 
I mean, Tom was as good as they get, and uh, uh, he was a great leader of the board. For Tom, birding and Audubon were more than just a hobby. They were a vital part of his life. By contributing to Audubon, as he continues to do even today, through a trust he set up, he has tried to ensure that for generations to come, the beauty of the nature that surrounded him as a boy in the Mississippi Delta of rural Arkansas will live on for all to enjoy.